I know it's the Jets and everybody's expecting it to fall apart, but stop. There's too much good and too much fun ahead of us to start trying to tear this thing down already. Good morning, Boomer. How are you? I'm doing great, G, and it's a great way to start because there is a narrative out there, and that narrative has taken hold over the last 10 days. Now, part of that is the Jets, and part of that is, you know, what happened down in Carolina and the way Rob Sala reacted to it, and part of it is attached to hard knocks. So we all know the narrative about the Jets. Are they going to fix the offensive line? Are they going to fix the offensive line? As a matter of fact, I played golf yesterday. One of the caddies said to me, what about the offensive line? I'm like, oh, my God, I, I've had it already. I've already had it with this narrative that has been out there now for 10 days, and it hasn't stopped. It's right. only getting worse. And, yes, there are so many great things about the Jets, and we should all be excited about the Jets season. We should be excited about the Giants season. There's a lot of great things going on over there, too. I mean, I, what is training camp for? It's for guys to figure it all out, to come together, and hopefully by the time that the regular season gets here, they're all on the same page. That's why they practice so much. That's why they meet so much. And there's going to be times where, you know, one part of the team is going to look good, maybe in practice. The other part of the team is not going to look so great. I tell you what, I saw a throw from Aaron Rodgers to Garrett Wilson that was ridiculous. And the way that Garrett Wilson extended to go get the ball, and I'm like, damn, if that if that's going to be what it looks like, that to me is what I want to focus on. I want to focus on the explosive nature of the the players and the quarterback and uh, what the what the potential and possibilities are. Believe me, nobody knows how important the offensive line is than I do, uh, and I will say that. They will figure it out. Joe Douglas will figure it out. Makai Becton will figure it out. Aaron Rodgers is going to be pushing Makai Becton. Rob Sala is already pushing Makai Becton. Now it's time to grow up. It's trying, time to become one of the reasons why we're so good. I mean, if, if you just put that guy out there and he stood out there in front of somebody, he would stop them long enough for Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> All he has to, to do is loiter, basically. Right, exactly. He'll be okay. I, and he's going to make a lot of money someday if he can just get it right mentally and feel comfortable about his knee. Now, I do I will want to I do want to say something about the Yankees. And, that, and what I want to say about the Yankees, I don't know if you saw this last night. So, you know, obviously I had to find the Yankee game. It was streaming. So mm -hmm. I find it. And right as I find it, Aaron Judge is in the batter's box and his back right leg buckles. And it looked like he was going to twist an ankle or something. And all I could think about was his foot, his toe, and watching him run and watching him go. You know, he's he's not hitting well. Um, he's just he's trying. He's out there. He's busting his ass, and he probably shouldn't be out there. It is literally. I I, I believe, and I know he's not going to want it, but I believe you got to shut him down. I really do. And I think if they if they tell me that they have surgery scheduled for December. It's going to piss me off. Oh, that's just so stupid. I, I mean, I mean, how many times have we seen that with athletes around here where you end up having a problem and the next thing you know, they had surgery like two weeks before spring training or something. You feel like it should have been taken care of right, right. after the season. I, and I don't know if surgery is required. I, I don't, but I know that that had been talked about and that Aaron himself said it's, it's, it's a consideration. And I don't know if that is still on the table, but I, I would get it done now. And I would, if, if, if in fact that's the case, and I would shut him down. I would not wait. Don't wait until December. Don't wait until January to see if the thing's going to heal. If, if, it's, if surgery is something that is a part of this and can get him back to, you know, 95 to 98%. Then now's the time to do it. Not, yeah. not, not, not in the off season. No, of course. I mean, I, I mentioned it yesterday that the time to think about that was right now because this team is, they were 500. Now they're below 500. And if they go on a magical run to make it to the playoffs, which is unbelievably unlikely, just like the manager said, they're going to get their asses kicked in the playoffs at that point. Anyway, did you see, did you see him buckle yeah, on, that, I did. Uh, on that Charlie Morton? And then after Breaking that, ball. yeah. And then after that, he was basically ginger on the next swing. So yeah, it I, is it's just not. It just it doesn't look right, you know. And it's it's uh, it's really not fair to him. I mean, I I hate the fact that he's injured. I hate the fact that he missed already two and a half months of, uh, of the season. Uh, he's their captain. He's their face of their franchise. And I understand all of that pressure that goes into it, plus a huge contract. But ultimately, if you want him. You know, to be able to have the next four years at the top of his game, it, we they got to take care of this foot one way or the other, either with surgery or with just rehab and time. Yeah, and as much as I have destroyed the Mets and been annoyed by this season, how pathetic it's been, the one thing I give him credit for is not pretending like there was any hope. 
There wasn't any hope. The team wasn't any good. They were done. They ended up trading guys, and they ended up saying, that's it for this season. We're going to look towards the future. Yankees have to do that right now, too. They have to. They absolutely have to. And Aaron Boone, who is the guy who's the the most positive person about the Yankees I've ever heard outside of Chris McMonagall, uh, Aaron Boone sits there and says uh, it's an unlikely run. And he says, well, you know, it doesn't look good, but we, I've seen teams go on unlikely runs before. So if he is saying that, a man who is never, ever cracking and saying that the Yankees don't have a chance of saying unlikely, then he knows deep down that they are done. Everybody does. They can't hit. Their rotation is in shambles. They're cooked. They're not making the playoffs. So now you're going to send Aaron Judge out there to make this injury worse or put him out there and, and put him in jeopardy, your best player, a guy who's going to be in Monument Park just so you can sit there and try for the rest of the year? I'm sorry. I know that some people say, oh, it to the fans to be out there. I get that for Aaron Judge, but not in this situation when he's injured. Just no way. This is not like an NBA minutes restriction thing. The guy's hurt, and you need him healthy for next year so this doesn't happen again. And we can all see that he is hurt. Yeah. That, that's that's the, the, the rub here. And then last night when his leg buckles, and it looks like he's almost going to uh, you know twist an ankle. I thought it was going to be a twisted ankle, but it's on that toe. And I can't even imagine – whether or not, you know, it's painful or just does, if there's discomfort in there. And, you know, when he's running, he's limping. I mean, we all can see it. And I uh, there's nothing worse than being an athlete that has high expectations attached to you, yet you can't be yourself. And, you know, everything starts with your feet, man. You know, everything starts with your base. And your feet are the most important part of that. And if you can't be 100% there, you are definitely going to be failing and he's he's trying but he's failing so when you see Aaron Judge in that batter's box and he's chasing bad balls out of the lot out of the uh, the strike zone or uh, striking out again or popping up again there's a reason for that he's not a hundred percent and I don't even know what percentage you would consider him but I, I give him all the credit in the world being out there trying to do everything that he possibly can I just I feel bad for the guy I feel bad for the Yankee fan who has paid all this money to see him And I know he wants to be out there for you, but it's just obvious to me that he is not 100%, not even close. It really is amazing the timing of things. You have him going into this contract year last year, and he has one of the great seasons we have ever seen. And then he comes back this year after the big contract and ends up getting hurt. If you think if those years were flipped, you know, I mean, how that would have changed his entire life. Uh, So for him, he's very fortunate that he got the contract and then ended up getting hurt for the Yankees, of course, and their fan base. It's just terrible timing. And the the freak nature of this, too, is another one of these things. We we get on the Yankees and John Carlos Stanton and all these other guys for their soft tissue injuries that this was just I mean, he's going all out in L.A. to try to make a great play, and he ends up jamming his foot into some concrete out there that's been sitting there since 1982. Well, the base, yeah, the base of the stadium. And what was even more amazing is that not only does he make the catch, he runs through the gates. Yeah. I mean, you can't say any more about the effort, who he is, how he carries himself, but now he's trying to do it hurt, and I just it's not fair to him. just not fair to him. It's... And they need to take care of it. Whatever they got to do, they got to take care of it. And you want him in February of next year to show up to be 100% healthy, no limitations, no limping, none of that crap if you can get him to that point. Yeah, and I know that that's going to be the waving of the white flag if they do announce that he is done, and that's not a good thing from a business standpoint. And I'm sure there's people over there like Randy Levine and Lon Tross that don't want to see that. That the the waving of the white flag and Aaron Judge is not going to play again, but the fan base knows. The fan base already knows that it's over. And I think that the New York baseball fan is as smart as they can be. They're as informed and into it as any fan base in the country. You know, a Yankee fan knows what's going on. Most of them, I think, understand that the right thing to do is sit down Aaron Judge. And I don't think that they're going to be surprised if it happens or going to bail. They're already bailing on the games. Like, there's no way that this is going to make them bail on the games anymore. I think that a Yankee fan at this point would rather see some younger guys come in and get some experience the rest of the year as opposed to watching Aaron Judge out there limping around, not being himself for a team that's not going to make the playoffs. You know, I know you're like a Pulse of the People Award uh, nominee. I don't think uh, I was. I think I've never been a nominee Well, well you that. should yeah. be. You should yeah. be a nominee because no, nobody has, uh, I think, a better sense of the fan base yeah. than you do. And I've sat here next to you now for five years, mm. and it always seems like you have 
the pulse of the fan base. The pulse of the fan base. Yeah, like like when you said that the Mets were not going to win and they suck, and that was like two two months ago that mm -hmm. they were done. I mean, like you were at, like out ahead. Of, you were out ahead of it. Yes, I was. I was out ahead of that for sure. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to ask you in regards to the local franchises around here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to say like if we ask ten fans of said franchise, how many fans? would agree with the assessment that you are going to give me about all the teams that we're going to talk about right now. Okay. All right, so it's a pretty quick answer for you, but, like, it goes back to the Pulse of the People stuff. Okay. All right, so out of 10 Yankee fans, we had 10 Yankee fans in here, how many Yankee fans would agree with what's our assessment, but really your assessment about shutting Aaron Judge down right now out of, the, out of 10 Yankee fans? Seven. So out of 10 Jet fans, uh, how many Jet fans would be talking to you about the offensive line? Nine. Right. Uh, Giant fans. Out of uh, ten Giant fans, how many Giant fans are worried about their defense going into this season? Uh, seven. Seven, okay. Yeah, I think seven. All right, out of ten Met fans, mm -hmm. how, many, how many of those Met fans are happy that they traded away Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander, and got back uh, high level prospects. I think probably nine out of ten at this point. I think almost everybody has come around on that being the right thing to do. Right. Uh, out of uh, ten Islander fans. Oh God. How many? How many Islander fans are happy with their uh, current state of their power play? <laughs> Uh, one, and that's Peter Schwartz. <laughs> yeah, that's, exactly. that's what it is. Yeah. All right, but the point being is that there is a there is a. I guess you'd say a story that's being written about you know the Mets. The Yankees, the Jets, and the Giants right now because they're getting ready to start playing. Yeah. And I think you probably have touched on each one of those correctly. Okay. In terms of your assessment of the percentages of fans that feel the same way you do about their said teams. Yeah, no, it's really annoying to me that so many Jet fans are concerned and buying into all this offensive line stuff because this is the time you should just be absolutely excited and not let something like that drag you down. I mean, you got so many games and so many disappointing moments in your history I mean, you haven't even played a game yet, and you got Aaron Rodgers here. You're the talk of the town on Hard Knocks. You're going to focus on Elijah Vera Tucker's ankle or Mackay Becton this. It's like, you'll be all right. You're going to be fine, man. Every team has got weaknesses. And you look at the Jets' defense, Aaron Rodgers, all the weapons, they're not going to be perfect everywhere. It's impossible. They're not going undefeated. Right. They're going to be fine. I mean, and then Mackay Becton, I just, I can't even believe. What did Rob Sala say that he needs to prove that he could stay out there without pulling himself out of games? Yes. I mean, he, this is a guy who <laughs> spent the entire offseason showing us how in shape he was and ready to go. He took selfies every single day in the gym mirror and showed his weight loss. And he still is taking himself out of games? I guess so. And out of practice? I've never really heard of anybody doing that. I don't remember A little ever. tap on the helmet? I don't ever remember that. I, you know, I, you'd see defensive linemen come out of games and stuff like that, and they would tap their helmet. Well, running back sometimes yeah. after like four or five carries in a row, you get a little bit of that. Yeah. You know, but. You get a wide receiver. Offensive linemen? Wide receiver running a couple go routes. Yeah. You know, he's a little tired. Take me out. Offensive you know, line. You know what's amazing? You you look at Kai Beckton as we're looking at a uh, video of him right now over at Jets camp. He, he is massive. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, massive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've never stood next to him, but standing next to Elijah Vera Tucker and understanding that Mackay Beckton's probably 30% bigger than that, I, I can't even imagine. I got to believe they are just incredibly frustrated with this young man for two years now. Well, I mean, and also you had a a real good sense that things were going to be different with the offseason he had, and he came in, he's still a negative story. And by the way, speaking of offensive line, you know, we were talking about uh, Elijah Vera Tucker and, and me and how I played guard, and he's a guard, and we had some fun with that. Do you know who played next to me as my center for two years in ninth and 10th grade? Bellport JV football. It's got to be like Sal, Sal Graziano? No, no, no. He went to save all He's a little older than uh, me. Yeah, no, no, no. no, no. Idea. Uh, so I, so I know this person? You know this person, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do. Not yep. one of your flunkies? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that, no. I would not say it was one of my flunkies. It's someone you know actually really well. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was your center at Bellport. The JV, ninth oh, and 10th grade, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, ninth and 10th grade. Played uh, right to the right of him. Yep, me and him. 
cracking everybody up, talking trash to the opponents? What if I told you that he's with us right now? Oh, Rascona. Brian Rascona, who was filling in for Eddie Scazzeri. Can you believe that? You 230 a, pounds back You were then. a center? I was two, weighed 230 pounds at so, my peak. So you, you saw that little uh, video that we have with the Geo just steamrolling Sean Marash? Yes. And you saw who my center was? <laughs> it was uh, Al. It was Al, yeah. Yeah, did you see Al get steamrolled in that whole thing? Uh, yes, I watch, did. I've watch, seen that video watch, multiple watch, times. Watch, watch. <laughs> there goes Al on his back with his little skinny legs up in the air. Uh, it was a good snap, though. Yeah. I, yeah, but he's looking through his leg. You're not, not supposed to be looking no, through your leg. No, you're not. Snapping. No, you're not. No. That's Did the you, best I've ever looked. Rascona can attest to that. It's the best I've ever looked blocking in my entire yeah. life. I was impressed. Yeah, in I my mean, entire he, life. I mean, it was he, like you were in the shoots. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned I made the shoot reference the other day, too. Uh, yeah, me and Rascona, we were uh, the the coaches couldn't stand us because all we did was crack up. I think we, they secretively liked us though at the end. Yeah, maybe, definitely, maybe. But did yeah, you ever, did you ever uh, ever have to shotgun the ball when you were a center? Or no. Yes, but very few times. Right. Yeah, Bellport, come on, never. Like, yeah. like, it was only like it was a third and thirty. There was one Fake play. Dive in strong, dive quick, inside full. Me and Giannotti, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, exactly. basically it. Or or mud, hey, right? Yeah, hand it to the fast kid and beat everybody up. That was <laughs> it. That was Bellport football. Thanks so much for watching the video. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell so you're notified when we're dropping new content.